Hey, this is Mr. Neff, and we are here learning today about text features. Uh, we're going to take a look at a nonfiction article today. We're going to look at, examine the uh, text features that appear in it um, and the purpose that they serve in helping us better understand uh, the text. So our lesson essential question for this week is how do I interpret the text and text features from multiple sources to understand the topic? So first, it's important to understand, well, what are some of the basic text features that we see, whether it be in a fiction story or in a nonfiction article? So first and foremost, you can see that all stories are gonna, or articles are going to have a title. It's going to tell the reader exactly about the information that they want to learn about. Some nonfiction will have a table of contents, uh, which just shows the different chapters or sections where they are located. You might have an index, especially uh, in a textbook, a glossary in a textbook. Um, the index is just going to tell you where to go to find specific information about a topic, a word, or a person. Of course, the glossary can usually be found at the end of a textbook. It's going to tell you about uh, the meanings of specific vocabulary words. Um, so those were kind of review. Uh, some that also might be review. Headings or subtitles. Uh, we'll look at some headings today. They help the reader to identify the main idea for that particular section of the text. They're usually written in bold, sometimes in italic, but they stand out from the rest of the regular text. Um, sidebars. Some articles might have a sidebar. It's a set apart from the main text. It's usually located on the side, hence the name sidebar. Sometimes they're at the bottom of the page, and they elaborate on the detail um, that's mentioned in the text. Sometimes they provide like fast fact text boxes. Uh, pictures and captions always bring the text to life, show an important object or an idea from the text. Um, some uh, uh, articles might have diagrams, which allow the readers to see detailed depictions of the object. They could have charts or graphs uh, that represent and show the data. Um, they might elaborate on the data. They could uh, explain something in the main body of the text. Um, maps are, of course, going to help us to locate places around the world uh, to help us better understand the text. You may see cutaways, cross-sections, uh, which allow readers to see inside something by dissolving part of a wall or to see all the layers of an object. So if you were studying, like, uh, an animal cell, you might see a cutaway or a cross-section that kind of removes the outer layer so that you can see inside of it. In fact, we're going to take a look at a cutaway in our example article today. Lastly, inset photos that can show either a far faraway view or something of a close-up shot of a, uh, of a minute. Um, a graphic organizer that helps us to identify text features and the purposes can be like a T-chart. So what I would like you to do is to pause for a moment um, and to set up a T-chart is just basically by drawing a T on a piece of paper, one line straight down uh, the vertical uh, center of the paper, and then one line horizontally across the top. doesn't have to look exactly like my T-chart does. On the left-hand side, you're going to uh, label it Feature. You could also label it um, Text Feature. I'll put the word Text in parentheses. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to describe well, what was the purpose of the text? How did it better help me to understand the article? So go ahead and label each side of your T-chart. If you need to go and get paper and a pencil, you can pause the video at this time. All right, so let's take a look at an article. And you can see in this article, the first thing that a good reader is going to want to do is they're going to just want to, want to skim the article. So I found this article on New Zela. The title right away tells me a little bit about the topic and what I'm going to read. Uh, it's Fold Mountains are the result of Earth's tectonic plates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to oops, my uh, T-chart. I'm going to write down that the title. And the purpose of the title was to help me understand that I am going to learn about fold mountains and how they form. So back to the article. So the next thing that I see as I skim down through is I see a picture. And it looks like I'm guessing this is probably an example photo of what a fold mountain is. I've never seen a fold mountain before. They look fascinating. They look really, really steep high in elevation. 
Uh, the caption tells me a little bit about what the picture actually is. I don't just have to sit here and guess. It says, folded mountain and iceberg in an eastern Greenland fjord. Um, so it is an actual picture of a fold mountain. So I'm going to add that. It's a photo, a beautiful photo. And it shows me what a fold mountain looks like. Still don't know how they are created, though. I'm sure the text is going to tell me a little bit about that. So the next thing that I see is all the main text of the article. The main text, of course, is going to point out important details about what fold mountains are. As I skim down even further through, aha, this is not a photo. Obviously, it's not a picture that somebody would have taken. Instead, this is what's called a diagram. It's a drawing. And this diagram I see has different titles. 500, I'm guessing MYA stands for million years ago, so a long, long time ago. They're showing what the Falkland uh, plateaus look like. I can see from the level of the ocean, the plateaus were not very high 500 million years ago. But fast forward to just 330 million years ago, it looks like well, they're still kind of level with the level of the ocean. But this is showing underneath the surface of the plateau, it looks like tectonic plates are pushing together, pushing the Falkland Plateau closer to the continent of Africa. That's going to cause some compression. And I notice that it looks a little bit different in the water level in between the two bodies of land. 290 million years ago, as the tectonic plates continue to shift and push towards um, Africa, I can see now the Falkland Plateaus are much higher in elevation. Um, they're way above the level of the ocean that we saw earlier. Um, and over here, I can see that the Cape Fold Mountains now have actually grown in elevation. They're much higher. So this diagram actually shows me how Fold Mountains are created through uh, tectonic plates moving together. So I'm going to add that to my text features list, diagram of the Falk Lens Plateau. Plateau. And it shows step by step how the fold Shape. So back to the article. I'm going to continue skimming down through the article to see if I can see any more. Um, this diagram actually, I'm sorry, this caption is going to tell me a little bit more about the diagram. I'm going to skip over reading that for right now. Aha! Here I see text that looks a little bit different. It's in bold print, which means that it's a little darker, a little bit thicker. The author clearly wants this to stand out. It says, young and old, high and low. So that's what's called a heading. And a heading like that is going to tell me a little bit about the main idea, about the information that I'm about to read. In this case, it can also help the reader to predict the information that go it's going to contain. So when I read um, a heading that says young and old, high and low, I know that the information in it is going to contain um, facts about fold mountains that are both um, relatively new and uh, really, really old, and how it might impact the uh, level of elevation of the fold mountain. So once again, I'm going to go back to my text feature, and I'm going to add heading, and I'm going to be specific, young and old, high and low, and the purpose was to give the reader an idea about the main ideas of that particular section. Right. I'm going to continue skimming down through. I see another awesome photo. This photo looks like it has some kind of alpaca, possibly. Um, in it and behind it, I'm guessing, is a fold mountain. It almost looks like it's a volcano the way you see lots of uh, 
clouds or smoke behind it. Maybe the caption will tell me a little bit more about it. It says, Torres del Plain National Park in the Andes of Southern Chile in 2018 with the uh, Cuernos del Plain in the background. So that must be, the background would be behind. Uh, so that must be the Cuernos del Plain. Um, and a Guanaco in the foreground. Ah, Mr. Neff was wrong. He thought that was an alpaca. It is an animal I've never heard of called a Guanaco in the foreground. So the foreground would be kind of in the front of the photo. And that was taken by this uh, person, Wolfgang Koller. All right, so I learned a lot just from reading that caption. So captions are another type of text feature. I'm going to add that to my text, uh, to my T-chart. Captions tell information about the photo. So I don't just have to guess what's in the photo. I can read the caption. It'll tell me exactly what's in the photo. And I learned something new today. I learned what a guanaca is. All right, I'm going to continue skipping down through the article, and I see another heading here, a questionable shape. Um, I'm guessing this is going to talk a little bit about fold mountains and the shapes that might take place um, as they are forming. Um, from some of the fold mountains I've seen before, it looks like this one is very curved, uh, very tall. Some of them in the background look like a little jagged. Um, the fold mountain that I saw here, it was curved, but it looked a little bit more flat on the top. So in this particular text, as I scroll back down, I'm sure I can learn about the information that causes fold mountains to take their shape. So headings are very helpful to readers to locate information quickly. If I get a question on a quiz about um, a shape of a fold mountain, I know I don't have to go back and reread the entire article. I can just go to the section on shapes, and I should be able to locate an answer or information to help me to answer the question pretty quick. Here we have another heading, Fast Facts. Um, so I know in this section, I'm not going to read a whole lot of information, main ideas. I'm just going to learn some basic facts that might be interesting to know. Uh, it says fold, foreland mountains. Fold mountains sometimes are characterized by foreland basins, depressions that run parallel to the mountain range. The Ebro Basin in northern Spain is a foreland basin that formed with the Pyrenees, uh, a fold mountain chain created by the continental collision of the microcontinent of Iberia with a massive Eurasian plate. So those are some big words. Basically what they're saying is deep underneath the Earth's sur surface where there are tectonic plates, which we're learning about in social studies and science, um, those plates are constantly shifting, constantly moving, and they are changing our Earth um, every day, little by little. It sometimes takes millions and millions of years um, but our Earth is always changing. I hope you learned a little bit about text features um, and the purposes of them and how they help us to learn a little bit more about the text.